And uh, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty members, honored guests, and most importantly, the incredible graduates of Fulbright University of Vietnam's class of 2023 and families. Uh, what an honor for me uh, to be here today with you for the commencement of the very first uh, undergraduate class of the Fulbright University of Vietnam. I want to begin by offering my most heartfelt congratulations to all the members of the class and to your parents and families who supported you and in doing so supported our young startup university along the way. And to the students, I agree with Thuc An. You were very brave to bet your future on this young university. Xin chào các, các ba mẹ, phụ huynh và gia đình của các em sinh viên chuẩn bị tốt nghiệp của khóa 2023. Tôi xin tỏ lòng ngưỡng mộ sự can đảm của các anh chị khi gửi con mình vào một trường đại học non trẻ. Từ khi ngôi trường còn chưa hình thành và đến bây giờ vẫn chưa xong xây xong ngôi trường của mình. Và sự can đảm đó đã nhận được kết quả tuyệt vời là các em sinh viên đã sẵn sàng tốt nghiệp và được chuẩn bị tốt với những kỹ năng để biết cách nắm lấy các cơ hội và không ngần ngại trước các thách thức trong tương lai. Ok. You won't be hear me speaking in Vietnamese today anymore because Fulbright was worried that my Hue accent <laughs> will not be easy enough for you to understand. <laughs> today I want to share with you three personal stories. The first story is about realizing unrealized dreams. I want to start with my father. My father was born in 1952 during the war time. His father, which is my grandfather, was sent to the north of Vietnam before my father was born. And my father was never saw his own father again. My father was able to make to the top high school in Hue, but he couldn't finish the high school because of the mobilization during the war in Vietnam. His family experienced many scars of the war. His father died in the north before the unification, and his sister was severely injured and lost a leg during the war. And there's a bomb that exploded near my, my, my father's house, and if it's closer, I would not be, in, be able to be here to talk to you. My father had many unrealized dreams. I was born in 1982. War was already a distant past. And Vietnam started to recover from the wars. When I was a kid, my father had a simple dream. It was for me to finish the high school that he, he couldn't finish and have a college degree. Somehow, somehow I got very lucky and I exceeded the dream of my family. I graduated from the high school that my father attended and went on to have a PhD at Stanford exactly 10 years ago today. I am now working at Google and on the cutting edge of AI and artificial intelligence, a field that has the potential to transform humanity. Like any journey, I experience struggles and failures. Here are some examples. Any of you here went to gifted schools? Please raise your hand if you did. Oh, that's great. You know what? Me too. But I got kicked out of the math class in my high school for the gifted. That was my first failure, but it's not the only. I then failed the first English exam to get into the university in Australia. My first project in robotics I did at Stanford was such a failure that I almost gave up my PhD because I was not good enough for it. And my first two projects at Google was also ended in failure because my engineer, engineering skills were limited. In the heart 
those hard moments, I always remind myself how lucky I am compared to my father. I was born in the time of peace. I never had to wake up in the middle of the night hearing gunfire and bombs. I never had to struggle to make ends meet. Feeling lucky and being optimistic gave me the strength and courage to pursue ambitious projects despite the failures. After living Fulbright, you will soon recognize that life is filled with ups and downs. And in Vietnamese, they call it Đời không như là mơ. <laughs> you might have to face many obstacles. Try to make the best out of it. Find opportunities in those challenges. Try to make the best of it. I went to for example, here's an example. I went to the Australian National U University for my undergraduate. This is a story that I share, also shared yesterday to some of the students. I chose it because uh, the name was so impressive, you know, Australian National University. But the expertise is, not, is in research, not for undergraduate education. So I was very bored. This is the big obstacle for me, but it also gives me an opportunity I remember the homework at my university was probably easier than the ones you had at Fulbright. And the easy homework gave me time to explore research and the time to do research with the faculty there. And the research work I did at the university gave me the platform to my current career's trajectory. In telling you this story about realizing unrealized dreams, I want to give you optimism about the future even though the world has seen many challenges in the past few years and will in no doubt face more challenges in the years to come. Like myself, by having the college degree, you already realize the dreams of many generations of Vietnamese. But remember, just because you have completed this important phase of your education, you should not stop learning regardless of whether or not you decide to continue formal education after graduation. If you ever struggle, remind yourself that the previous generations had a much more difficult time than ours. That will give you strength. The second story is about my own journey in AI and my reflection of how AI will impact the world and especially your generation. I also want to tell you a little bit about how I got started in my journey of AI. When I was a child, I wanted to grow up and work on something important. So I asked myself, what should I do? What should I work on? And one day, I saw a picture of Neil Armstrong taking his first steps on the moon. I was amazed by this image and by this achievement of humanity. I wonder why we were the first to reach the moon. After all, we were not the fastest animals. We were not strongest, and we could not even fly. Then I realized that we were able to reach the moon because we, were, because we are smart. We are so smart that we built machines to fly to the moon. I dreamed of building intelligent machines so that I can advance humanity. These machines will be our final invention in my dream because they would help us create new inventions at an exponential rate. Little did I know that the field of study that would make this possible was called artificial intelligence. That very dream that had taken me away from my hometown in Hue, Vietnam, through a journey to Australia, Germany, and the United States. Fast forward today, I have been working on the field of AI for over 20 years, and I'm still inspired by the potential of this technology to make the world a better place. I believe that AI can revolutionize many aspects of our lives, from healthcare to transportation to education. For example, AI power machines could be used to diagnose diseases more accurately or more efficiently than our human doctors. For example, AI is already been used to evaluate medical imaging in order to detect cancers 
my uncle, my own uncle, died from cancer 20 years ago because he was diagnosed too late. Had AI been used more widely to detect cancer, my uncle would have survived. AI can also address some of the world's most pressing problems, such as poverty. AI can be used to help farmers respond to rapid changes in agro-ecosystems, such as changes in water, availability of pets, and increased crop yields, for example. And yes, AI would definitely have exciting applications in the field of education too. AI is already been used to provide personal and learning solutions to students, including those with special needs. It can be used to help students in the poor or remote areas to access learning opportunities that denied them in the past. But the Fulbright professors who are gathered here today should not worry. I do not expect machines will ever replace the invaluable role of a dedicated human teacher and mentor. And to all the students in the audience, any of you who have used ChatGPT for your homework, raise your hand. You are very brave. I'm sure on this special day, your professor will forgive you for whatever you did with ChatGPT. Okay, I do not think that AI can relieve you of the, uh, the need to study and write papers. Believe me, I tried to get ChatGPT to write this commencement speech. <laughs> and the results were, well, let's just say I decided to use my own words. However, I also believe that AI will create many challenges in our society. We are indeed in a historic moment. What does it mean to have machines that are smarter than us? And what does it mean to be no longer the, mo the most intelli intelligent species on this planet? Those are the fundamental questions that we, have, that we will have to deal with in the coming years and decades. Also, there are many aspects of AI that are different from the previous uh, transform transformational changes. One is speed. Recent breakthroughs like ChatGPT were not even imaginable just a few years ago, including people like myself. And in the near future, innovations that make worldwide headlines today will soon be rendered hopelessly obsolete. With previous technologies like the combustion engine, electricity or nuclear fusion, humanity had many decades, if not centuries, to adapt and learn. Time is a luxury that we can no longer afford. This means that dislocations and disruptions that all technologies bring about are likely to be more abrupt and disorienting for our society. But a unique feature of AI is that it's an open field that's open to all players. And all those giant companies like my, my own work on uh, pouring billions of dollars into AI, the next breakthrough can come from anywhere. And that makes AI a more powerful and a force for good and for ill. And in AI, you will have access to very powerful technology. I hope that we can take advantage of AI, you can take advantage of AI, and given this generation and countries like Vietnam a new opportunity. And I hope my generation and next generation will use it for the force of good. And I believe that we'll be able to navigate all the challenges that AI will present us. The third story is about the significance of FUV to me and to the future of Vietnam. For me, the journey with FUV is a journey into my heart. Six, six years ago, my wife and I had our first daughter. My wife and I named her Victoria. With the initial V to remind ourselves of Vietnam and our motherland. Victoria is in the audience today. Compared to my father and myself, Victoria is going to have a much better foundation for her life. Instead of going to, going to a village school like myself and my father, she will experience the world's best education. This is what I always dream about. 
for my kids. It is the same dream that my father had for me. But I also, I also feel something is missing. Growing up in the United States, there's a risk that Victoria will never know about my father's story. We'll never understand our roots, our culture, and what it means to survive the war, what it means to experience the happiness of Ted, what, it, what is the meaning of the tale of kill. I am sure I'm not alone in harboring, harboring these anxieties about my child. In fact, I suspect that the parents in the audience today may have already felt similarly as they send their children to study at a young university named after a deceased American politician. Around 10 years ago, I first met Tommy Valadi and Miss Madame Dambatui. They shared with me their ambitions for FUV. I must admit, I was first skeptical. But after I learned about their vision, I began to share their passion. First, Fulbright is dedicated to creating opportunities for young people who, like my younger self 20 years ago, dream of finding new ways to contribute to humanity through technology or in other ways, such as through public policy, entrepreneurship, or the arts. Second, Fulbright University uh, Education seeks to ensure Vietnamese do not forget where they came from and what makes Vietnam unique. This became clear for me when I observed very impressive Vietnamese studies courses at Fulbright. And I hope that one day, Victoria, my daughter, will be able to take such classes at FUV to learn more about our past, our future. And this is why I'm a, I'm a, I am very excited about FUV. <laughs> Fulbright is important for me in part because it resonates with the personal stories I have shared with you today. And beyond that, I believe the education Fulbright offers is what Vietnam and the Vietnamese students need. In a time of rapid changes in technology in general and in AI in, AI in particular, having a broad knowledge, knowing how to learn, how to adapt, how to work with others, and how to communicate are vital skills to adapt and navigate the modern world. In addition to your education, your experience helping to build an institution that quite literally did not exist when you joined us five years ago will serve you very well in the, in the unpredictable world that we live in. It is why I'm confident you will not only adapt to what the future holds, but will have to shape it. I hope you are very proud of the important part that you have played in creating this exciting new institution. Being part of the most exciting education project in Vietnam, and because Vietnam is the most exciting country in the world, so this is the most exciting project in the world. I wish I have could receive your education and your experiences. And I hope my daughter, Victoria, will benefit from it in the future. They say that the best commencement address is a, is a short address. But I fear I have already gone for too long. Thank you and congratulations. Good luck. I know you will all achieve great things. Xin chúc mừng.